Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And for those of you who have, thank you for subscribing. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff for this episode. Before we talk about uh, the the, the uh, links that I have for this episode, uh, Apple just did have a, uh, a uh, an event today. It's Tuesday, October 22nd. Um, I just finished watching the video, uh, the keynote video that they had. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to get it in this show. So we'll expand a little bit on that. But if you want to find out about it, go to apple.com. They have a link. You can watch the keynote video yourself. Um, I'll have uh, on the on the next episode, I'll have a brief overview of what's going on uh, with with the the new Apple announcements that happened today at the Apple event. So anyway, with that, uh, starting off over at make at makesign.com, there's a fan built Lego friends science class. This is pretty cool uh basically it's it's a uh a, a little lego science class that a fan made and um people have been deriding uh lego's girl-centric friends line as being well dumb and girly but lego fans like it for two very cool reasons first it has lots of unusual and unique parts and many of a uh, domestic nature like bowls and turkey legs a lot of the models are pastel colored which most of lego's boy centric sets won't include these factors increase the things that lego builders can do with their bricks so the second reason is that like all lego it is what you make of it so what if you don't like the storyline invent your own <laughs> if the models are lame design one you think is cooler so anyway this is pretty neat um Basically, it's a Lego Friends science class that a fan made based off of the Lego Friends uh, line. Um, and it's, I have to agree, the Lego Friends line has a, has a number of, of, of pieces that you're not going to find under, you know, in most other Lego sets. So, you know, it tends to have stuff uh, like back in the day when I was a little kid, you know, technique sets were the sets to get because those were the only sets that had parts that you would never find in other Lego sets. Well, Lego Friends is, in a way, not not quite the technical aspect of it, but in a way, it's kind of turning into that. That's the only place you're going to find some of these. So, pretty interesting. Definitely check it out. It's a pretty cool little uh, build that this fan made. Um, it looks like an honest-to-goodness uh, Lego science class. Pretty neat. From Uber Gizmo, scientists create a disk that is able to store data for a million years. Being able to store terabytes of data on a hard drive is pretty easy nowadays. All you need to do is hook up a hard drive to your computer and you can start storing content immediately. But being able to keep that data lasting for longer than several years can be quite a challenge, especially if you regularly use the hard drive. It looks like that will be a thing of the past as a team of researchers have built a hard drive that can reportedly store data for over 1 million years years. So uh, researchers from the University of Twent in the Netherlands, they uh, have been uh, looking into this and what they found was that data needs to be stored in a way where it is distinct from other pieces of data. So they put their discovery to use by building a disk that would do just that, which resulted in a thin tungsten disk that has a series of fine lines that has been coated in a protective layer of silicon nitride. So uh, it doing this, it allows them to basically come up with a storage medium that allow that they can store data for very long periods of time, much, much, much longer than what you'd get uh, with typical magnetic media, much less stuff like write once, read many times media, worm media, you know, or optical media. Those tend to degrade over time. And you do tend to have to copy that data. That's why I'm a big fan of hard drives. And I'm I'm would much rather have a giant set of hard drives in a pretty redundant arrangement that 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 I can you know upgrade over time and I'm gradually copying 
my data over to new media. So uh, pretty interesting, pretty cool. From hackaday.com, can hacking introductions. Now, we don't mean can hacking as in uh, like a can of Dr. Pepper or, you know, a can of soup. We mean can as in C-A-N, car area networks or automobile area networks. Uh, this is a pretty cool uh, little post here. We're introducing a new series, Hackaday is. On CAN and automotive hacking, first we'll introduce CAN and discuss how in-vehicle networks work uh, or controller area network, it's also known as. So definitely check this out. Um, it's pretty interesting write-up. Pretty cool. Definitely take a look at it. From likecool.com, I just had to include this because I'm a huge Star Wars fan and, you know, every geek who is a Star Wars fan would will love will love this uh, poster. It's a poster of every Star Wars character, and I mean every Star Wars character. Pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. It's 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 epic. It is truly epic. Um. I, that's all I have to say. I'd I'd love to have this. I I want this poster. It's 18 inches by 24 inches. Uh, it's uh, done by the artist Max Dalton. Um, it's every character in the Star Wars trilogy arranged in in the first Star Wars trilogy arranged in the order of their appearance, titled episodes four through six. I hope he does more like this. Pretty neat. From Hackaday, the most minimal homebrew computer perfection is achieved not when there's nothing more to add, but when there's nothing left to fail. Going by that metric, Stian's 3-chip 6502 homebrew computer is the epitome of perfection. It's a real working homebrew retro computer using only three chips, a CPU, some RAM, and a microcontroller to bootstrap the computer and provide a video output. The key to this minimalist build is having the entire boot process controlled by an 18 mega 16 micro controller. This interfaces to the 6502 through a dual port SRAM, a one kilobyte Cypress CY7C130. Uh, this dual port RAM allows the CPU and microcontroller to access the same bit of memory, uh, making it easy to bootstrap a computer from a bit of AVR code. So pretty awesome. Check it out. Uh, obviously, this is not something you're going to be doing video editing with or anything of that nature, but still, it's pretty neat. Uh, Pretty neat. From MakeSign.com, Shapiko 2 milling machine launches today. Shapiko was the first little milling machine that could. It surpassed its Kickstarter goal and went into production with the goal of supplying CNC mill fans with an easy-to-use and inexpensive, and we mean inexpensive as in $300, uh, CNC machine, which is very inexpensive as, as far as CNC machines go. Two years after the after the Kickstarter campaign concluded, creator Edward Ford has joined forces with Inventables to build the Shapoko Shapiko 2. I'm sorry, I'm totally slaughtering that name. Uh, it goes on pre-sale today, uh, which actually is yesterday, Monday, the 21st. The second version features a completely redesigned Z-axis, dual Y-axis steppers, as well as Inventables Maker Slide Linear Bearing System. Pretty neat. Definitely check it out if you are looking for a small, portable, and relatively inexpensive milling machine. So I uh, wanted to keep this show quick, short, and easy. So that'll do it for this episode of The Geekinator. On the next episode, we're going to be uh, doing a little bit of uh, update on what went on with the Apple event uh, today. I just finished watching the video, and I just don't have enough time to uh, gather my thoughts and get this video out. So I... Uh, I'll have that uh, Friday evening when I do that show. Um, I'll probably be running the new Mavericks when I do that. Hopefully it will not completely break my uh, video workflow pipeline. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.